I'm Mel Stewart, and this is Swim Swam Podcast. Joining me today, two-time Olympian, two-time Olympic medalist, and speedo athlete, Haley Flickinger. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Happy New Year. Was, how, well, how was your New Year? How was your New Year's celebration? Oh, it was good. Um, I didn't really do much. I'm very much a homebody, as we talked about last time. So, you know, I was at home, um, but at home with my parents this time. So they actually came to Arizona. So it was a good New Year, for sure. Good for you. I did nothing. I was at home. I was in bed by like 10 p.m. <laughs> But I, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, <laughs> so I was anxious to get you back on because we, we talked – after Budapest and Budapest, you, you have, you know, you're coming off a gold medal, you're coming off a silver medal in 200 fly at world championships. And you took the longest break of your career. Um, you leaned into life, you're selling real estate. And, uh, as I was talking to you, you're like, Mel, I don't know where I'm at. I'm, you know, I'm like, are you going to, you know, you're going to the world cups. So you're going to shave. Are you going to, you're going to world? I think I'm going to world champs. Are you going to shave? I don't know. Now we're sitting on the other side of it. You won gold in the 400 IM, silver in the 200 fly. You won the banana in the 200 free, <laughs> getting ninth, but it was a personal best. So give us the recap. You know, how, how you feeling after after we had talked and now you've gone through this entire process and kicked butt at World Champs? <laughs> um, I feel good. I I'm in a very different space than I think I've ever been in my career. And I'm taking it day by day and just seen where it lands and it landed me on some pretty cool um podium spots at short course worlds never thought that i would be on the top in a short course race let alone a 400 i am but i'll take it um but like i said i'm just going with the flow of it um and just trying to just grow as a person not just an athlete um, I'm not identifying myself as just an athlete anymore. And I think, um, the more I do this this year, the more I see that maybe this is how I should have approached things a long, long time ago. Um, so I'm just, I'm enjoying it. Um, taking it day by day. I have good days, I have bad days, but you know what? I'm learning every day. And that's something I think is so special at my age to be continuing to learn. Um, Nick Fink comes to mind. Uh, mm-hmm. yes. Uh, this is, this is a peer. This is somebody, I mean, you were with him for years and years and years. What's, uh, you know, he's, he's done really well because it seems like he shifted his focus to his education and, and to like starting that adult chapter of your life. And, um, it seems like this, it's the, it's the secret sauce. It's the magic juice. <laughs> um, is, yeah. is, could you, would, would you, how would you characterize it? Um, I, I agree with what you said. I think, um, Nick and I are, are similar in a lot of ways. And I actually, when I got back in the pool about a week before I got in, I actually texted Nick because I knew I was about to do something similar to what he had done in the past year. And I mean, I've trained with Nick for my seven or eight years I was at Georgia and, um, just kind of got into his outlook and he said the exact same thing. He thinks that because he had school and school was his number one priority that no longer did he have such pressure. I mean, it doesn't go away. You still have it, but the pressure and just the, the constant 24 seven, just dial into swimming and just identity of swimmer. Um, I think it helped him a lot to, kind of put that aside and have something else to look at um and forward to and to put a lot of energy in and um I'm starting to see that it's it's working for me as well um and I mean Nick is is crushing it and I hope that I'm able to do do what Nick is is doing right now because it's incredible to watch It, it seems like um it doesn't seem like 
when conversations are had with Coach Bowman, when you're not around, you know what he says. What does he say? <laughs> that I'm the most, uh, I overthink more than anyone he's ever met, more self-critical than anyone he's ever met, um, perfectionist till, till I die, um, <laughs> extreme perfectionist. Um, overanalyzed every single thing that I do. Do, do you, do you, um, do you think you suffer from anxiety? Oh, 110%. Yeah, yeah. And that's, so if you're in that state and you're all, your body's always pumping out cortisol, that can't be, that can't be healthy. <laughs> that can't be the, the, you know, you, you can't compete at an elite level when you're always battling yourself. It's exactly. Um, yeah. It's, uh, I'm wondering if, if we're going to be moving into your best quad ever, because you're like, you know what, I'm going to take the pressure valve off. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a battle for sure, because I've trained my brain for how many years to think a certain way and more and more and more perfect, perfect, perfect. I've got to do more than anybody else. I've got to do this. I need to be this. And to, for the past six months, completely have to change that and every day fight that urge to be like I need to be doing this I'm not doing this this wasn't this this wasn't this that's very challenging but the fact that I've been able to to continue and stick with it for this long I I have high hopes that we'll see what I've been hoping <laughs> would happen eight years ago um and if it doesn't, it doesn't. But I'm in a space where I'm not putting so much energy into just over analyzing every single thing I do. Not to say I don't, because I still do. But what I'm, what Bob and and Rachel and Logan and all my strength coaches have had me do this these six months is it's forced me to take a step back and um we'll see where it lands me <laughs> yeah. there are athletes out there not not everybody can can compete on the global stage not everybody can not everybody no we don't always not, everyone doesn't have that opportunity but once you get into that league um it is it's a different it's a whole new ball game and there's so many things that are going on. It's my personal opinion that you, you need to have pancake competitions. You need to go to the Olympics <laughs> and like shake it out. I feel like once you have Olympic medals, a lot of the pressure comes off because it's like, you know what, for the rest of my life, I've got this on my resume. I've achieved that. And uh, you've got to be grateful for that. Do, do you feel like pressure came off when it's, when you, when you reach that benchmark? Um, absolutely not. I think, um, I had more pressure because of it, because I still have not performed the way that my coaches have told me for years and my teammates, myself, I just, I have not lived up to my potential anywhere close. And I think Every benchmark that I've hit that everyone sees as a success, it's honestly added to my pressure and my anxiety because I have yet to do it. There was another time I got second again, second again, second again. And I think it's it's added to it. And this summer, I think, was the, the, the final second where I was like, I, anxiety and and my expectations and pressure that I have put on myself, I can't do this no longer. I don't like what I do. I don't enjoy swimming anymore because I'm just, it's all about result and pressure improving myself. So yeah, it, it's the opposite for me, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. I, 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 I teed up that one and you're like, nope, that's wrong. So let's, <laughs> let's look at it through this lens. We just let's just we'll just rank the medals. The gold medal is a happy medal. People are people, you know, not for everybody. Some people are like they win and they, you know, they're they're upset because they didn't do something they wanted to do. <clears throat> but most people who who pick up a gold medal are happy. The silver medal 
is the most is the un- I've heard this described. It's the unhappy medal because you wanted to win gold. The bronze medal is a happy medal because you're like, God, I got on the podium. I got you know at least I, at least I medal. <laughs> so the the silver and the brown gold, the bronze are the happy medals, and the silver medal. Uh, it's it's there's it's conflict. I th- I think that you unpack that for us in in many yeah. ways, but it sounds like it's somebody else and it's expectations of other people. Um, for sure, I I have a thing where I hate letting people down, especially like when my coaches pour all of their energy into me. And I remember Jack told me in 2015 a time that he was like, "You're gonna go this." I'm really far off still, <laughs> and and it's. It's the fact that I haven't done what everyone has told me I'm supposed to do. And therefore, inside, I feel disappointed and defeated in myself because I haven't done that. And um, I love those expectations. And that's, I think, also why I'm continuing to be as good as I am at 28 years old. Because I'm just freaking grinding to, to prove that I can do these things. Um, but I don't think the true potential will come out until I actually let go of that and just swim just, um, because I enjoy it. Um, so yeah, it's a weird, Bob has never met someone like me. And so (laughs) you're welcome, Bob. (laughs) My brain works very different. You have to surrender to the joy of swimming. Not an easy thing. You got to surrender yeah. to the process of, of what this is and let it go. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's, uh, that's a lot easier said than done. Um, let, it's, I, I've drilled down too much on this. I, I'm going to, I'm going to take some pressure <laughs> off this interview and I'm just going to ask you is for, this is these, here are the intelligence questions. It's what everybody wants to know. Um, and uh, I'll have to put a little bit more pressure on. I, I will say this. We did our 2000 swim swam did their 2022 year in, predictions for 2023 and someone came out one of the reporters goes arizona the pro group everybody <laughs> makes the world championship team in, tw- in 2023 uh which you know it's it's that's a fun prediction but this is the, this is like the cool group and so i would i want you to take me inside the vibe of this group got you know and, I, and I, it's chase kalish jay litherland uh olivia smaliga simone manuel reagan smith ryan held and of course, yours truly on the, you know, Haley on, on this team. Am I missing anybody? Um, we have Sierra Schmidt. Um, we also have, um, we have a few foreigner uh, pros as well um, that are training with us. So it's a big group. What, what's the vibe? Is it, is it, is this, is it cutthroat? Is everybody, is everybody <laughs> angling to beat everyone? Or does it feel collegiate? You know, is it, is it, is it, is it fun? Is this a family? Um, I think ASU has done an absolutely incredible job with culture and I think everyone just messed right into the collegiate, um, atmosphere and everyone is so uplifting. I've, I've been on a, I won't lie, I've been on a little different schedule than all the pros. So I haven't really been, um, training with them too much, um, until up like two weeks ago. Um, so I haven't really been around, but, um, I've enjoyed being around them and, um, I've swam with Reagan uh, and race turn practice for the first time since she's been out here uh, in the last uh, couple weeks. And, um, it's been really cool. It's been really cool to be alongside of her. And, um, I, I joked one day about like underwater. So I was like, can you teach this old dog new tricks? <laughs> um, so it's just, it's really cool um, to, to be with that group. And um, right now it's, it's, they're all so positive and they're enjoying it, which I knew they all would, because like I said, I love Arizona. I love, I love the team so much. And um, I'm glad that they're able to experience uh, what I've, what I've enjoyed the past. Oh my gosh, it's been, it's my fourth year. Um, so yeah. <laughs> it, it feels like everybody that's in this group has had great success. And, you know, I don't know if you, you, from the outside looking in, you could say maybe some, some d- disappointments in, in small ways, but, you know, extraordinary talent. And, uh, and it, and they're all swimming with Bob, which tells me that very serious about achievement in the future. Uh, is it, do you guys hang out socially? 
Um, I think there's like times when we do. Everyone's on um different schedules, kind of. Not well, kind of. I'm <laughs> maybe just me. Um, but I don't think very much like outside right now. Mm-hmm. It's also been Christmas training time, so everyone's pretty tired. Um, but I do know, like, during the fall when I was um, doing a, a lot of real estate stuff, there were some things that were going on. But, um, yeah, I think everyone's kind of tired right now. Yeah, I imagine so. Um, yeah. In the real estate world, are you dropping names to to get conversions, to get sales? <laughs> what's, what's your real estate game? Uh, so I still have not figured that out yet. Um, I do not drop my name, but I've had a few times where I would meet a client and the next day they would come in and be like, I Googled you. I know it all. <laughs> I'm like, so embarrassed because um, I, I don't drop names. I don't say like anything because I'm so new and I don't, I'm like part time. So I don't want them to think that I don't know what I'm doing because I do know what I'm doing. I'm just so new that I don't want to just blurb into, oh, I swim a lot and I don't have full focus on real estate because that's not true. I'm I'm balancing them both. So I, I haven't really like figured out like how to kind of talk about it and what I'm doing currently with swimming and real estate without me thinking that I sound like I'm such a newbie. <laughs> That works. It works. I and people yeah. buying out. Yeah, people buying yeah. houses. I'm like, they, they're they're looking for the right price. Yeah. <laughs> the, in, in terms of, uh, you know, moving forward, it's I, I feel like you know Nick's been in this process for a long time. I like that you reached out to him and you guys, you know, you're you, you've talked to friends. It, it is my hope that this um, that that we see the same effect in your career and that that it it takes a little bit of the pressure off. And uh, it's a net net in the pool. Do Thank you. you. Do, yeah. Do, do you have any New Year's resolutions for 2023? So I always don't like when people ask me this question because I feel like I have, I have goals every day. I guess I'm so um, such a perfectionist that every day is there's a goal in mind. So just because it's January 1st, nothing's changing because I got a goal that I made this morning just like I did the morning before so um no not really but um I did come up with a word for this year that um my co my weight coach um Jake here at ASU and I came up with uh he came up with one and I came up with one and mine is believe um I want to believe this year in myself um, so I guess that's like a new thing I'm starting this year. <laughs> when you're doing your dance with the universe, it's always good to just keep it broad and be like, <laughs> this is what I need. I, it's, it's not, it's not a resolution, but it's, um, a lot of people do that. My wife does that. Mm-hmm. It's just one word. This is what it's going to be about this year. Mm-hmm. Or it's, um, are, so do you go deep into the cosmos of training and, uh, where, where, where am I not going to see you again until like June or August? <laughs> probably yep i'm trying to to push off um meets for a while i feel like i've done so many meets um this fall that um i just want to be home and i want to train and balance real estate because i think my mind is the best when i have both going on and i think if i have disruptions with meets um every month i it's easier for me to fall back into that compare, compare every month, compare to where I was last month, compare to where I was last month. Um, so we'll see. I haven't um, talked fully with, with all the coaches yet um, on what we're going to do, but that's that's in my head. They don't know about it probably until they watch this. But <laughs> I had a sneaky suspicion that you were going to do pretty well this fall just because you have so many years of so much work under your belt. You have this massive base. That's always an insecure position to be in. You never really know after yeah. taking a break. Like how, how much is really there? But uh, do you feel like, wow, you know what? I've worked hard for most of my 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 elite career 
And yeah. there's a whole lot, there's a whole lot down there. There's a whole, I have a huge foundation. <laughs> did, did you, did, did, are you coming out of world championships feeling that? For sure. I, I definitely shocked myself because um, I actually left the, the day before I left, I swam um, and I turned to my coach, um, Logan, and I said, Logan, do you think I'm going to be able to finish a 400 IM? <laughs> he looked at me and was like, <laughs> like, like I was crazy um, because of what, how different my training has been. And he was right. Like I, like I have such a base that um, I think as swimmers, we, we train so much that we forget how much work we've put in and that doesn't just go away. Um, and yeah, I'm learning, I'm learning that it's, it's there. It's still there. <laughs> I, I have a sneaking suspicion you've never had a, a full taper that you that you've gotten <laughs> into taper and because you're questioning yourself you've always worked too hard during your taper and never really <laughs> given yourself a full rest is it is is uh is there any truth to that I mean probably I I've gotten like rest but of course every set I go into um probably what he is expecting um me to go I probably go faster and push a little harder like if it's supposed to be red I'm probably going blue <laughs> um but no I've had I feel like um since I've been out here I've had some pretty good tapers but I mean when it says it says fast or hard or I'm, I'm probably going to push it harder than what most would <laughs> that's that's what I thought how what, what is it what, how long do you taper like what's a, what's a full rest you're, you're rolling into, to, to, you know, selection meet. What's a full rest for you? Um, to be honest, like, I don't really know. Cause I, I never really talked about it to them. Uh, it just kind of happened, but I do feel like I have. Weeks, um, in my head, um, I didn't have much at all for trials. So I'm thinking like what I had for, yeah, it has to be like a couple of weeks, maybe. I don't know, maybe two or one. I don't know. <laughs> two, two weeks. Yeah. I, 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 it like slowly goes down and I'm not exactly sure like when exactly it starts to go down. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I just do what I'm told. <laughs> one, one year, I think you should, I, th I think you, whatever you've tapered, I think you should just double it to see what happens. <laughs> that would be lovely, actually. <laughs> yeah, why not? Double it. Double it. Let's see what happens. I've never heard of anybody who's tapered. If they've, if someone is a grinder and they have a huge base, I've never heard of anyone tapering too long after they've had a hard season of training. I yeah. Just, I hear people that, that taper. And then do a second taper and they can't finish their races on that second, you know, they get to the, uh, the big meet and they can't finish their races on the second taper. If, if yeah. they've been close, that's kind of tough. Well, let's end with this. And, and then you maybe you could frame this as how young athletes can deal with this situation. And if you're comfortable with talking about it, but you might have, my understanding is that you, you have an interesting way of dealing with, with bullies and trolls. Is that do, do do you have some wisdom you can share? <laughs> um, yeah, I think I kind of um shocked uh, Speedo when I told them my my uh, answer to this. But uh, when I was um in Australia, uh, uh, stuff kept popping up on my Instagram, and I was like uh, confused by it. And soon enough, I I realized what was going on, and um. I turned to Lily and Lily uh, King, she was my roommate. And um, we just started dying laughing. Um, and basically it, it's about my appearance, I guess. I didn't like look too much into it, but I guess it's my appearance. I'm super muscular um, and other stuff, but um, yeah. <laughs> and um, if that affected me, I honestly said, no <laughs> um because I think I just have grown into who I am and how hard I've worked and all that to realize that no one in my circle thinks 
what these people are typing would they would never say this they do, they don't think this at all so i 120% believe that so everything that's said on the internet like i really it, it didn't affect me at all I actually like we really laughed about it because we couldn't believe that people like we're sitting behind computers typing that so basically any what i could say to any young one who might experience things on the internet just remember that the people in your life that really do care about you they know you as a person they they love you so much would never even think about anything close to what people say on the internet so just remember that that just hold the people you love and who care about you close to you and near to your heart and what everyone else has to say it doesn't it doesn't matter at all so i hope that can help a little one um who might be experiencing it i really only i i really cared more about what was happening on speedo's page than i actually did to me and what was being said about me um because we don't need that <laughs> You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcasts on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.